Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Dr. A. My vlog this time is about test item analysis. To do this, may I present to you the procedures using UL methods. So when we say UL methods, it stands for upper and lower achievers of the test. This is appropriate for objective tests that may range from multiple choice questions, true false, fill the blank, and even matching types and any other test types that require one fixed response or answer. From assessment planning, of course, to the test construction, to the invigilation of the tests and collecting the test papers, whether it's a digital or paper-based, let's have the first step. Score the tests and arrange the scores from highest to lowest. Then you have to separate the top 27% and the bottom 27%. I'd like to take 50 as the example of test takers here. Therefore, if we have 50 takers, we get the 27% upper and lower. So 27% of 50 is 13.5. So we need to round it off to 13. Therefore, we have top 14 and bottom 14. We don't need the middle, which is equal to 46% or total of 22 if total takers are 50 in cases there are same scores it doesn't matter we need to cut on the 14th achiever in the upper group and we need only 14 a sample population for item analysis from the bottom group again we're talking here about 50 assesses next is to prepare a tally sheet to answer the number of cases from each group who got the item right for each of the items and then convert the tallies to frequencies and then to proportions. In the context of assessment, frequency is the number of candidates in the upper and lower achiever groups who answer the item correctly. So we have an example. Let's take these as an example. So how do you tally the assesses or the uh, assesses answers? of the MCQ. Considering item number one, where after tallying the answers of the upper 14, nine answered A, two answered B, one for C, and two answered D. Since the answer for item test number one is A, our frequency is nine. So this means that out of 14, nine got the answer correctly. You do, not, uh, you do the same, of course, for the lower, where 4 answered A, therefore the frequency is 4. Tallying for true or false, well, it must not be difficult. It's the same principle, uh, the same principle in MCQ, and the same principle as you tally for fill the blank. In this case, we just need to count the checks of who among the assessees got the item correctly. That goes to frequency. So next is to determine the proportion to do this. So you have to divide frequency by the number of upper achievers or lower achievers. So this is simply frequency divided by the 27% upper or lower. In our example earlier, for item number one in MCQ, our frequency for the upper is 9. So to get the proportion, you take the frequency divided by the upper proportion, uh, upper achiever, which is 14. So that is 9 divided by 14. Therefore, our proportion is 0.64. For the lower, it's the same principle. You... You get the quotient of 4 and 14, so that is 4 divided by 14, and you get 0.28. So next step is to compute the difficulty level. Let the DF represent difficulty level or index of each item by getting the average of the proportions of the two groups. To make it simpler the or easier, that is upper proportion plus lower proportion divided by 2. 
In our example, we have 0 0.64 plus 0 0.28 divided by 2. We get 0.46. And we need to interpret 0.46. What does that mean? May I show you the different ranges of difficulty index or difficulty level? So this shows that difficulty index may range from very difficult, difficult, moderately difficult, easy, or very easy. Now the question is where does point 46 fall? Point 46 is between point 41 and point 60. Therefore, the interpretation of that particular item is moderately difficult. So that is for the difficulty level or difficulty index. Next is we need to determine the DS. So this is simply the discrimination index. In the context of assessment, discrimination is the power of an item to separate the upper achievers and lower achievers. So we need to compute the discrimination index of each item by taking the difference between the proportions of the two groups. Or to make it simpler, it's upper minus lower proportions. Using the same example, we have 0.64 and 0.28 as our proportions. So to get the difference, we get 0.36. So that is our discrimination index. So again, we need to get the difference of upper proportion and lower proportion to get the DS. So what does 0.36 mean? Looking at our illustration, the ranges of discrimination index may be questionable, not discriminating, moderately discriminating. So if you will notice, it is possible to get negative value. So we have these different interpretations. And if you have 0.21 to 0.60, so meaning 21%, between 21% to 60%, the item is discriminating. And then 0.61 to 100 or 0 1.0 meaning 100%, that's very discriminating. So where does 0.36 fall? Okay, to so interpret 0.36, the item is discriminating. So lastly, we have to decide. Having determined already the DF and the DS, decide whether to retain or accept, revise, reject or discard an item based on the two pronged values of the DF and DS. In our example, we got moderately difficult and discriminating. So what do you think would be our action here? So let's all be helped by this table. So we have the difficulty index column and then discrimination index and then the action or the remarks. Since we got for our example moderately difficult and discriminating, that means that the item is a good item. So that is acceptable. So ladies and gentlemen, you're done or uh, you're done with the first item so assuming you're done with the first item and you now do or apply the same steps in all the items well in a test that you created for example 30 items in total you will determine how many among the 30 are acceptable or good items how many needs revision reject or probably may need revision so that's how we do the item analysis using the UL method. 
in case you are to use Google Forms, Testmos, or other digital platforms, well, the system will help you analyze the quality of the test items you constructed. So thank you so much for watching. I will highly appreciate if you click and subscribe the button, uh, to click the button and subscribe to my channel. Okay, good luck on your learning journey. So this is Dr. Way. See you on my next videos.